All right, what should we do next? Strike suit zero, that sounds cool. We could try that, I guess. What the crap? What, holy crap, this is kind of awesome. Okay, you're looking at strike suit zero, and man, this is, uh, this is a tough call right here. So it goes like this, there's no story, so don't even worry about it. You and your friends are blue, bad guys are red, shoot them all down. That's it, that's the game. But I've got really mixed feelings about this one. There are so many good things happening here, but there are also a lot of downsides too. On the plus side, the game is really pretty, like super pretty. Strong color choices, nice light trails coming off the ships. When you use your thrusters, you feel really fast. You get to transform. Wow, there are a lot of great things happening here. On the downside, when the fights heat up, this game just has way too much stuff going on. It's ridiculous. There are just so many fighters, there's just so much stuff on the screen, you're constantly dodging missiles, there's lasers and explosions everywhere. You also gotta keep an eye on your ammo meters at the top of the screen. There's so much going on, like almost too much. On top of all the things you have to look at, there's a lot happening with the control scheme. So let me walk you through my setup. The left trigger is to speed up, the left bumper is the brake. Press left bumper and click the thumbstick to operate your turbo thrust. Left thumbstick is your main flight control. I set my right thumbstick to control the roll of the plane. D-pad up toggles the machine gun mode, which you actually use. D-pad right cycles my machine gun. Left D-pad cycles my missile type. You're gonna need those too, fairly frequently. Right trigger fires the machine guns, right bumper fires the missiles. You obviously need both of those. E button locates the next target, X button targets whatever's in front of you. You're definitely gonna use those a lot. A button transforms the plane, Y button evades the missiles. You'll also need to hit A and Y a lot. This is all unless you're transformed. When you're in the mech mode, then all the buttons are different. I'm not gonna go into that, I think you get the point. This is one of those games where you need to press all of the buttons, all of the time. You have to speed up to intercept fighters, but then you have to slow down to make it easier to target them. You're constantly transforming to take out groups. All the while, you have to make sure to listen to your missile alerts and hit the evade missile button so that you don't die. And this is why I'm torn. Now, I'm getting better at controlling the plane, sure, but it's uh, it feels like a lot of work. And the game's difficulty is really weird. Some of the missions are really easy. And then right after an easy mission, you have to fight a battle cruiser, which is terribly frustrating. There are guns all over it. So I'm gonna compare this to Star Fox 64. Do you remember what this game looked like? Let's pause for a second. This is your life bar. This is your boost. You got some bombs. That's pretty much it if you think about it. Star Fox 64 is a much simpler game. Now, it's not a flight simulator, but instead it had simplified controls and simplified gameplay so that you could feel like you were an expert pilot even though you weren't actually playing a space flight simulator. Strike Suit Zero takes it to the other extreme. There are so many buttons to press. Can you get good at Strike Suit Zero? Yes, you can. And I'm getting much better at piloting this thing. But I'd argue that so much complexity actually hurts Strike Suit Zero as a game, because it's not easy to just pick up and play. So should you buy it? Ugh, I don't know. And I feel like such a cheap loser saying that because the game is really pretty.